So welcome to this webinar where we are going to have a thinking dialogue about using the thinking environment as a lever for culture change in a in a further education college. So the dialogue will be between myself and I'm Catherine and my colleague Andrea and we work at Kirklees College and we've been working with the thinking environment at our organisation. So a thinking dialogue at its best is not two people talking, but it is two people thinking. And we both people offer each component, each of the 10 components of the thinking environment to each other. And there's more about that, what the thinking environment is in the components in the reading that accompanies our webinar. So listening to each person's turn and the principles of the dialogue are like a thinking pair but the time will be taken on the same topic will be short and there'll be frequent turns back and forth whilst we do our thinking. So, Andrea, what do you think? I think it's really nice to have this space to do this reflection. And we've been on such a journey and we don't often stop to do this reflection on how far we've come with thinking environment and thinking cultures. And I was reading back through some material we shared previously um, at a conference around our initial kind of the start to our journey. And it just reminded me of how we started so small, just you and I, Catherine, you know, really trucking away at this and taking every small win as a big win um, to where we are now. And I think we were really brave and courageous in the start because we really believe in this practice. Um, we know that the best thinking is done when those components are held in place and people have that space to think. And we've seen that develop over the past maybe three phases now, we decided to call them, maybe not years yet, but kind of three phase cycle of where we've got to which move from just getting people to experience it. And Chloe reminded me just before we started the recording about you can read material on thinking environments, but you've got to be in it to kind of feel that power of it and feel what that space is like when someone holds it and facilitates that with the 10 components in place. Um, to sort of where, where we are now, which is really thinking about meetings culture, and staff voices across the organisation and embedding that in what we do. What do you think? So, so I think in terms of an organisation, our, our starting point really was that we, we work in quality and our uh, vision was to embed a culture of uh, kindness and support and the college values are kindness unity and excellence which is a bit of a no-brainer in terms of the thinking environment because that just encompasses the, the whole ethos of those values so i think and i think initially when when we sort of came together we thought we were the only ones in the college that, that had practiced in a thinking environment. And, and I knew a lot of people sort of external to the college in further education that, that were um, using the thinking environment. And, and obviously through lockdown, the, the wonderful Joy of Fee was born and, and the Ideas Room, um, which anybody could go to, but we wanted people in the organization like you've just said to feel that and that's where we started really and I think we went round in big circles for a little bit what should we do where should we start it's so big the organization's so big the thinking environment's so big where do we actually start and then we just said oh let's just start let's just let's just stop talking about it and let's just get on with it and that was the first thing we did we we offered ideas rooms to staff to just come along be in the space have that space to think share, share ideas um but importantly i think learn to listen to each other it, it wasn't just a practice of years of space for you to come and think but but come and listen to your colleagues come and share that space come and 
come and support each other to to do the thinking to to do the work so i think and i mean that was a, that was a little while ago now and it, and some weeks were successful and some weeks we just sort of got together and reflected and thought oh nobody's coming or nobody's showing any interest and and i think you said andrea at the time well one more person's been so that's a small win and and you know that's something we need to take forward it's it's going to be a slow burner but but we are going to get um we are going to get the word out and we are going to get where we want to be with this work what do you think i think we yeah i think we banged our drum <laughs> once we got brave and we banged on about it and we talked to people about it and I mentioned it in meetings and you took it to people because we wanted people to hear about the thinking environment and the ideas room and how they could be heard. And we tried lots of different strategies, didn't we, through ideas rooms, maybe just for leaders and managers and, and all the while it's been a bit of a learning journey for us to develop our practice and, and think about our thinking environment kind of facilitation as well but we have to go at it in bits and I think it can sound like such a humongous task to develop a thinking culture in an organization but it is about exposing people to it cleverly talking about it banging the drum so I remember after we'd sort of tried ideas rooms and we put lots of information out we always shared about joy fe going on in an evening uh, we wanted to do something big. And I remember our conversation about how do we get this out there? How do we get people to just know about it, experience it? You've got to be in it. We thought about video in an ideas room. We thought, well, that's probably not going to, you know, support the ease of a space if we're recording it. Um, and that turning point then of, of really banging our drum with senior leaders and saying, look, this, this is something where we, you can hear staff voices, where... Um, you know, you, you can get their input and ideas, especially if one of our values is around unity. And so we were really brave and we asked for thinking rounds to be within staff conference. So all the staff across the college. And we knew, I think, didn't we, that we'd set the rules of the space, but that maybe we didn't have time to really go through the components and how how that should work. But we went at it, um, we provided the rules, we supported managers so they could all facilitate thinking round. And some were really successful and some maybe brought the rules. But what it did was let people know about that practice, let people know about that work. And when we got that feedback from construction, how powerful that space had been, and how they'd heard from staff that have never spoken up before. I think that was our, you know, this is it now. That was a real turning point for us. Um, and it was just you and I, wasn't it? And, and a couple of people in our team. So that day meant that it would just switched a little light on on people's radars about thinking environment. And maybe there were a couple more people starting to bang that drum because they'd experienced it. What do you think? I mean, that was that. Yeah, that was certainly a turning point. And I, th I think our initial goal for for the work was that everybody knew what it was, so that if 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 we asked anybody, you know, have you heard of this? They could be, you know, they could have they could they could hazard a reply to to what it was. So it. So you're right. The first the first sort of wave was was getting the information out there, getting the getting the ripples. And then the second goal was for everybody to experience it. And I think from that day, when we'd just sort of gone for it and done it en masse, that we then tried to incorporate it into everything that we did, all, all staff, staff interactions. So um, from one-to-one -one staff interactions and, and, and holding a space for, for people to think, you know, however briefly, to supporting managers to use it in meetings, uh, and in their staff time to to hear those voices to the training that we developed um using it in our 
um, professional development opportunities with with staff and just going around the college and particularly at construction you know pe people would say oh, what's this thinking thing or you know that thinking thing that you do and just just raising that 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 curiosity about what is it how can I be involved people are talking about it um how can I be involved and we began to find more more advocates didn't we when we began to find more more people in corners that oh yeah I, you know I've, I've done that I know about that and 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 bringing bringing people with us and and I think then the next phase was to keep that momentum going because I think I think we'd gathered some momentum and to then bring leaders and managers in, into the into focus and because we felt we had we felt we had the buy in from senior leaders but 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 more of the talk was was uh, across you know rather than down through the organisation so targeting um, leaders and managers and you know with the fabulous uh, Lou Mycroft who who came in and, and did some work with our leaders and managers and uh, Brian Croft who who did some work with myself and Andrea on the thinking partnership and through the the ETF stuff the Skylarks and, and the um, North Star program we um we sort of pushed forward with that and, and and at each stage I think we've had a a really good think about right what have we achieved where are we up to and and when we've taken a pause like we are now it's 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 to look back it's just you don't realise how far you've come and out. And, and even though it feels like we've just been chip chipping away, we've made massive progress in a in a short time. And I think I think now there's more talk about it, more people know what it is, more people have experienced it. It's now about empowering others and, and giving them the confidence to to take it forward, which I think we're starting to see. Um what do you think? I think we've come really far. I'm really proud of us. Um, thinking back to when we've had kind of difficulties in in getting thinking environment to be explored or pushed back around thinking environment. Um, and I remember a particular kind of workshop I was hosting and I was facilitating a discussion. And I am now at the point in my practice where Facilitated discussion for me means thinking round, <laughs> and in any meeting I'm in, I, I you know I, I want to hold those components in place, and it and it and it frustrates me when it's not, and it's just free conversation. But facilitating that discussion and and saying, How, I'd like to do this as a thinking round, and you know people people held the rule of, of no interrupting to a point, but I could see frustration in people because. They weren't getting validated in their thoughts or they had to not they couldn't give their validation to others that they agreed with them or i thought of that too um and i remember coming away from that thinking you know why were people frustrated do they not have the information how do we how, where what's the best place to start it's chicken and egg with this do we go at the information this is what it's all about this is what it means and then expose people to being in that space but you need to be in a space to experience it to appreciate it and I remember that vividly um and I think now we, we continue with that we continue to be brave and I felt a real shift in us from saying oh can we can we try a thinking round or oh we might have a go at a pair to just being brave in that and saying thinking rounds in this meeting then we're going to go for a pair we're going to do some freshest thinking um and I think appreciation's always well more more recently has got quite embedded in what we do whereas previously that might have been that oh should we have a bit of appreciation um so i think the organization now is at a point where they expect some facilitation of thinking environment within what we do and now like you said with the leaders and managers you know we, we did a, a piece of work where we we brought Lou in, fantastic training and development um, program for all leaders and managers in our organisation to learn the basics, but also think about writing questions that um, provide opportunities to explore possibility. Um, because, you know, the task, the day-to-day -day tasks you've got to do in FE and all across all education, you just spend time doing the stuff, but not thinking about the best stuff to do. 
Um, and that's where it gets monotonous and hard work. So we wanted to give our leaders and managers the opportunity to be exposed to thinking environment, learn how to facilitate basic building blocks of a thinking environment, but also pose the right questions when they are facilitating thinking rounds. Um, and I think that was the right next step for us. And because they now have those building blocks, I think they're at that stage that we were maybe at near the beginning of, oh, do I dare throw a thinking round in here? Um, you know, am I able to run a thinking pair? Um, but they'll get there with that work and it's practice, isn't it? And it's, I guess now opportunities or maybe you're facilitating opportunities for them to practice um, thinking environments within their teams with us. There was um, something that I wanted to mention around staff voice, how we throw out surveys for staff voice and we get answers back to the questions that we want to ask. But actually, we never maybe really hear what people think, uh, ideas, suggestions, solutions, um, and how thinking environment is that next step, isn't it, for that unity, that really clear value that we've got. And there needs to be more of that in an organisation, not people's feedback on a sliding scale, but hearing voices, foot, foot spa for the soul. I think somebody once described it as in our organisation to be in a thinking environment, Catherine, which is lovely. What do you think? Yeah, no, I think you're right. And I, and I think you just made me think about challenges because, you know, there has been challenges and there's been... I suppose people that have felt threatened by it, you know, like like you said, that some people initially didn't want to take their turn and why are you making me take my turn and what do you mean? I can't speak when I want to speak. And it is a practice and, and we are, I guess, going into phase three and, and the practice, even though this is what we've introduced, this is what we've introduced, we've kept practicing, we've kept the practice, we've kept bringing it. And, and like you said, you know, it, Initially, if we if we suggested it, people would roll their eyes and shuffle in their seat. But now they're yeah, I'll sit back and wait for my turn because because I'm going to have that space, and they all they almost um, invite and welcome that space now to to do that thinking. Um, you know, particularly only Tuesday this week, I was doing some thinking pairs at construction and. And the, the joiners and the plumbers were, were kind of, you know, what do you mean you want to sit you want me to sit here and think for three minutes? And I'm not asking you to talk for three minutes, I'm asking you to think. And some of them, for the whole three minutes, we just had silence for three minutes. And I just said, listen to that. How wonderful is that? How wonderful is that with no noise? We're all just thinking. Um, and we can all just, you know, move, move on to what we need to move on to next. So I do feel that 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 people are really embracing it and, and I think moving forward in, in, in terms of saturation and, and momentum we, we do need to attack the meetings culture and our meetings culture is not different to to many others you know time, with time time is precious and we often maybe get together when an email will do it but but how could we be more effective in that space um, and use that time more effectively to to hear from everyone and, and to generate that that best thinking so that we can move on to what we need to do and we're not rushing in and we're not jumping from one thing to another, but we're taking that time to think. Um, that quality of thinking that Nancy Klein talks about be before we can do, do the work. Andrew, what do you think? All of the above, I think. I think next it's the meetings and I think the key thing is practice what you preach. We practice it in our meetings. We do rounds. We set questions. If it's a big thing to think about, we do pairs first. We come back. We do precious thinking. And I think if people can, you know, the first step, just start with that. How are you round? That practice of care at the beginning of a meeting and a closing round with what's live in you. That's a first step on this kind of journey um, to hear from everybody in the room. Just want to appreciate Chloe and Sheila. Thank you for your generative attention while we did that thinking. And Andrea, I, I appreciate you. Chloe and Sheila, I appreciate this space to be able to reflect on our journey. Um, and Catherine, I appreciate your 
camaraderie in this. 